I think if I was in a basement or a dark house at night, then I might be really afraid. <laughs> I know, Steve, you've done your fair share of this kind of stuff with Barbara before, and I think maybe doing that might scare me, but here it's daylight, and I'm just talking to Kurt over here, and we're not actually detecting anything at the moment, so not as scary. Which leads me to Kurt Richardson, who is the director of the Indiana Paranormal Society. Good morning, Kurt. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Okay, first of all, what do you guys do? I know this is just kind of a hobby for most of you, but you were telling me all the different stories and different activities that you guys do in this area. Uh, we do monthly meetings. We have monthly ghost hunts. There's probably 30 or 40 people right here in this area that does it. Um, like I say, it's a good, fun little hobby that we have. Um, we go out to these different locations. We try to find any activity that we can. Anything that we do find, we post on our website. Uh, we let everybody know what's going on. And what kind of equipment do you use? Because I know you have a whole bunch of it. You have one thing with me, with one you'll see right now. Um, one of the things that we use is called an uh, infrared thermometer. Mm -hmm. What we do with this is we will uh, use it to detect any hot or cold spots in the house. If somebody's saying that their house might be warm, if they've got a cold spot here, we'll check for drafts, we'll check for vents, anything that's going to be in the house that's what we use this for. And we've actually tracked cold spots through rooms using these in here. Okay, what else besides that? Because you have tons of stuff. Oh, yeah. We use uh, EMF meters, uh, electromagnetic field meters. K2 meters, we've got Geiger counters, we've got infrared cameras. Okay, for people like me, what does that all do? <laughs> okay, uh, what they do is they measure, measure different fields of energy. Okay. Uh, we believe that ghosts are another form of energy. Um, they're able to affect our world in different ways. They draw energy, a lot of times you'll be at a home location where batteries are drained on you, brand new set of batteries. They're trying to get energy, trying to let you know they're there to manifest themselves. Um, we've gotten orbs, we've gotten full body apparitions before, um, a lot of EV. Uh, like I say, anything we can post on our website, we let tell the people to make their own decisions of what it is. And the EVP is actually the voice detector, right? Yes. Uh, what we do with that is we will take a standard tape recorder, turn it on, we'll ask questions. In a uh, place like here? Yeah, just like here. Um, we'll, at, we'll wait for like 10, 15 seconds between the uh, questions, and uh, then when we get done, we'll go back and play the tape recorder back, and we have answers in between the questions sometimes. That's kind of creepy. Okay, that kind of creeps me out. Is there a lot of paranormal activity in the machine area? Yes, there's a whole lot. Um, a lot of places around here, the 100 centers will be very active, the Hacienda out that way. Um, there's several cemeteries, a lot of private residences and businesses that we get into. And everything we do is free. We get a lot of phone calls, especially this time of year. If you know, my house might be on it, you can check it out. I'm glad to check it out. We'll give you a full report of anything you find. So pretty much everything. Well, I know you guys have tons and tons of different stories, and you've been telling me a couple of mine. We're going to talk about what they're going to be doing is actually a haunted cemetery tour tonight and then next weekend we're going to talk about some of the history that they're going to be talking about and the piece of the share of the stories of Hunts he's been on. <laughs> yeah, see that was scary. <laughs> Doing is we're going to be uh, doing a historic tour of the cemetery out here. We'll be hitting several of the grave sites from the life story of the people that's buried here, um, letting you know about some of the famous haunted locations that's associated with them. Um, we're also going to be showing some of our equipment off, letting people know how we use it, what we use it for. Do you find that uh, with what you guys do, there's a lot of skepticism, but also a lot of interest because it is something that a lot of people aren't sure about? Yeah, we get a lot. We get a lot of people asking a lot of questions. We're glad to you know, answer anything we can. We've got a website that you'd like to check out, uh, www.indianaparanormal.us. Um, anything that we find, we post on there. If you have any questions, discussions, it's all going on there. We've got different topics going. For parents out there, kind of worried that their little kids might be scared tonight. Not a scary thing, really, right? No, this is more historical. There's nobody going to be jumping out at you, scaring you or anything. It's going to be talking about a lot about the town history and stuff like that. We're going to throw a little ghost hint history in there, too. Okay, you've mentioned that Michigan area has a lot of paranormal activity. you got to tell me at least one story. That's kind of crazy. One of the stories out here, they have the train wreck that happened back in 1859 uh, over at Playland Park. Um, the bridge washed out. It was late at night. Uh, the train crashed over there. 39 people died. They didn't die from the train, train, tra train wreck. They died because they drowned in the rough water. Bed. So I, a lot of the houses in the area supposedly is haunted. I've had a friend that I did an investigation for over there. We've got two hours of EVP when nobody was in the house. Do you have any um, things that you guys have been on that really stick out in your mind as, man, that... Well, we've been to a lot of the real famous ones. We've got to go to Waverly Hills down in Kentucky. We've got to go to uh, Mansfield Reformatory out in Ohio. So we've been a lot of big famous ones. For people that might not understand why you do it, what, what makes you 
What makes you keep doing these things? It's a fun hobby to have, and there's a lot of history involved in it. I mean, I enjoy the history part of it. If you get a house, you know, we'll go back and trace, you know, who owned it, you know, what it was before the house was built, do all that, do all the background. Do you find that a lot of people in your group um, like to kind of mess with the unknown and not mess with, but you know, trace the unknown and that yeah, kind of I thing? Mean, it's it's always fun. It's, you know, you're always trying to find out what it is, what happened. Time for anything? No. Cool. Thank you. This is just the tease before. I should have brought all the gear. I, yeah, I gotta go through and find all that. It's all down in the basement and the. We got a lot of stuff thing. to do there. We gotta get a table. I said after that. Looks up. You're still gonna have overtime. I'm gonna have overtime if I got out. Oh yeah, we're going to take you all the way back to 1859 and tell you about a horrible train accident that happened here and the people that were late. We're going to stay with us. We'll be right back. What? What an uplifting tea. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.